Across the Spider-Verse is the biggest movie of the year so far, so let's see how it ranks with the other Spider-Man movies. There are 13 movies related to the Spider-Man mythos, and if there was a 14th, Morbius would still be last. This thing was a total mess. The biggest thing that this had going for it was the exploration of the moral ambiguity in Morbius. Besides that though, this movie is a lot of things, but it ain't good. Venom Let There Be Carnage was slightly disappointing, to say the least. It's the best rendition that we've seen in live action of Venom and his relationship with Eddie Brock. Tom Hardy absolutely crushed it, but besides Besides that, it felt flat, confusing you with a lot of action and meh humor, and it also just doesn't have the heart that the first one did. I know some of you will hate me for putting Amazing Spider-Man 2 at 11, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. It is bloated, overstuffed. The only cool parts that I felt emotionally connected to was the relationship between Peter and Gwen. Andrew Garfield, though, is a stud, no doubt about that, but this one was just not his magnum opus. Venom at 10, I think is okay. It's weird, and it's a wild ride. It mixes action, humor, with an amazing and bizarre chemistry between Venom and Eddie Brock. It has a lot of flaws, but one thing that it is, is fun. Yes, I put Spider-Man 3 at number 9. I get it, all of the Bully Maguire memes are goaded. But again, it's messy and overstuffed. It tries to do too much, and it doesn't do anything particularly super well. Except the Peter symbiote transformation scene that is goaded, and of course, we have the soundtrack. Far From Home is one of those movies that tries to be a fun and heartfelt adventure, but it didn't truthfully resonate with me on a deep level. It felt like a great Spider-Man adventure with some consequences at the end, but it didn't feel like a step into the greater world of Spider-Man. I don't know, maybe I'm a dumbass, it's still staying at number 8. The Amazing Spider-Man was a solid reboot and I will take that to my grave. The biggest strength is Andrew Garfield's performance as Peter, his relationship with Gwen, and of course, the moral arguments that the lizard has to make. It's got a dark and more serious tone, which also fits perfectly into the Spider-Man mythos, I don't care what anybody else says, and the action was pretty cool, it could have been higher up the list. Homecoming was a great, true introduction to the MCU version of Spider-Man. It reintroduces the classic origin story in what a kid would feel like in modern times becoming a superhero. There's humor, there's charm, it's emotional, and it's pretty fun to watch. On top of that, it also kept the Michael Keaton superhero renaissance in check, so I'm gonna take this one as a W. The original Spider-Man is to this day one of the most emotional and hardcore experiences that I have seen from a superhero franchise. Dark, gritty, fully embracing the 2000s, an amazing villain Willem Dafoe, and it just felt like a true character study of Peter's struggles and his desire to become great. Bouncing off of that though, Spider-Man No Way Home is definitely in the top four. It brought together all the Spider-Man that we had seen in live action, and it gave us a movie-going experience that was undeniably super memorable. The narrative can get a little bit convoluted, especially with all the craziness with Doctor Strange, but you can't deny that this thing just brought a smile to everyone's faces. The character development was the key factor in it being so high, especially considering that Peter Parker is now going to move into a bigger role within the MCU. But I think you know exactly what's going on in the top three, starting with Spider-Man 2. The best rendition of the Web Slinger in live action, no if, ands, or buts. The exploration of Peter's struggles and his desire to find out if he actually wants to be a superhero and sacrifice the rest of his life to do so was beautiful to see. It has one of the best villains in a superhero movie ever with Doc Ock, and it doesn't rely on cheap thrills in order to keep you interested. Plus, that freaking train scene is going into the Hollywood Hall of Fame. At number two, which is gonna be controversial, I guess for some people, uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Up until a couple of days ago, this was firmly in my top two for the best animated movies, not including anime, in movies movie history. The unique animation style which had a huge effect on everything in pop culture when it comes to animation, the vibrant colors, the style, it was visually stunning and innovative in almost every technical level. When it came to the characters, the themes, and the tones, they were all well defined and strong all the way through. This thing is a masterpiece. But what do you get when you have a masterpiece and then you crank every technical level up 10,000? That is what you get with Across the Spider-Verse. This film builds on everything that made Into the Spider-Verse great and it elaborates even more. Expanding the storyline, the cast of characters, their relationships with each other, and identifying the consequences that come with being Spider-Man on a multiversal scale. An instant classic, one of the best superhero movies we've ever seen, and in my opinion, the best Spider-Man movie ever. I'll be waiting in the comments, let me know which one is your favorite.